Ooh, we nice and chilled. Just how I like it. <clears throat> oh, hello, folks. Hello, my fellow Latter day Saints. Kenzie Bradshaw, the Mormon entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Ayrshire. Back once again with another edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one stop shop for all the latest gaming news, gaming rumors, and those sweet points and trophies in the Trophy Achievement Hunter section. So, uh, yeah, another juicy week in the world of gaming. And uh, it's been uh, a very interesting one. Um, so, what do we have in store this week? We have got um, the developers of Rocket League saying a second Rocket League game is unlikely as they are wanting to focus on a games as a service uh, approach instead. Uh, uh, we've got news on Fallout 76, uh, news on Fallout, Nintendo Switch, Dead Island 2, we're being told, is not cancelled. It is definitely on the way. We've got something on Asterix and Obelix, interestingly. Uh, we've had a leak. We've had a leak that has been uh, confirmed. How was about that? Uh, in the form of uh, the Shenmue 1 and 2 remaster being leaked by Microsoft Store and Sega confirming it. Uh, uh, we've got... Uh... Oh, this is going to be a touchy subject. Uh, where... Uh, news on Roblox. Mm, that's going to be interesting. Uh, we've got news on Crash Bandicoot beating the Crew 2 to the UK number 1. AGAIN?! How have they done that?! And in the points and trophies section, in honour of my latest gaming rental, I am going to be... I'm going to be going through the secret achievements and the DLC achievements in Far Cry 4. The reason I mentioned Far Cry is because I've got Far Cry 5. Yep. One of this year's biggest releases next to God of War. Detroit Become Human. And even some anticipated ones like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So, anyway, as always, a shout out to my good friends over at Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. Once your free trial has finished, you can play the latest games at a fraction of what they would cost to buy outright. Once you start renting, you're gonna start saving. Trust me, I've been using this service for over a year now, and it is incredible the amount of money I have saved. Like I say, there are no late fees, so you can keep the game as long as you like to 100% it, or keep the game forever at a discounted price on the online store. That is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Ah, goody, 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 goody gumdrops. That means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's the gaming screw-up of the week. <laughs> yeah, I got I got these uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, five ninety nine at What Brothers. I mean, they were meant to be 10 quid, but I got them for uh, 40% off. But hey, no complaints here. Now, this gaming screw-up of the week. It doesn't come necessarily from EA. It doesn't even come from Activision. It doesn't even come from Konami. It comes from people stating the obvious. The obvious being stuff that we already know. So, here we go. According to an article in The Independent, which was, which was uh, published last week, 
Games like Fortnite use predatory gambling techniques to make children spend, experts warn. No, duh! We know this from Battlefront 2! You idiots! Have you not been keeping up to date? Ah, oh, there you got people like this who are idiots and do not keep up to date with what is going on in the world of gaming. And then you've got people like me who report on this stuff every single week. This screw up just proves how clueless these morons are! <sighs> deary, deary me. So yeah, this is basically my reaction to reading that uh, headline. <laughs> Yeah, that clip's from Tom and Terry, Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's a lot of ands. And anyway, let's get into this. Predatory payments in hugely popular computer games like Fortnite and Hearthstone are the equivalent to gambling but are unregulated and could lead young people to addiction and financial difficulty. Experts are warning. In the wake of gaming addiction being recognised by the World Health Organisation, which I still think is moronic to begin with, psychologists have drawn attention to what they describe as increasing similarity of gaming and gambling in what has rapidly grown into a multi-billion pound entertainment sector. They single out a type of in-game micropayment known as loot boxes. Mm-hmm, I wonder where we've heard those before. Where players buy a random reward, potentially including rare characters or powerful weapons. Loot boxes should only have cosmetics! An editorial published on Thursday in the journal Addiction, Dr. Daniel King and Professor Paul Del Fabro of the University of Adelaide says these schemes may entice some players with access to credit cards to spend more money than they can afford. Younger players in particular are less equipped to rein in their spending, the pair warned. In Fortnite, the wildly popular survival shoot 'em up, it's a battle royale game, not a shoot 'em up! Which has a free to play version. Players can access a campaign to play alongside friends using the game's V Buck currency to buy quirky llama loot pinatas, which give a random reward. Coins can be bought with real money or won more slowly through the game. More expensive llamas, such as legendary troll loot truck llama, cost at least £10 in V-Bucks, but include 20 items. While Hearthstone, an online card game from World of Warcraft, developer Blizzard, users can pay for packs of cards with a random selection of rare characters or skills to battle other players. Accessing these top tier items can be vital to progress or improve rankings in the game which may require beating experienced players with better upgrades and making earning credits in the game harder. The need to overcome this paywall only becomes apparent after players have committed a substantial amount of time playing for free, and amounts to entrapment, the authors note. Game monetization schemes have become increasingly sophisticated and have been more prominently, have featured more prominently within popular online games, the author, authors write. In our view, some of these schemes are considered predatory. Predatory monetization schemes typically involve in-game purchasing items that disguise or withhold the true long-term cost of the activity until players are already financially and psychologically committed. These build in other tactics used in the gambling industry, such as seemingly time-limited sales, invasive promotional adverts, and the imbalance of information on the player's side about the rarity of items. These can be used alone or in combination with information about the player's preferences, playing traits, and available funds to maximize the likelihood of eliticing, eliciting player spending. Last year, Activision Blizzard revealed it made four billion dollars or three billion pounds, more than half of its income in 2017 from microtransactions in free games such as Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. Fortnite's publisher Epic Games made $296 million, which is £227 million, from the game in April alone. What? Whoo-wee! 
So let's do some calculations here. Yada yada yada. Calculator. So, based on that, the game's been out, what, nearly a year now? So, let's go 227 times that by 12. Wait, 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 wait. 227 times 12. 2.7 billion pounds, which equates to 3.5 billion dollars. Holy moly! That's a lot of money! Well, one thing's for certain. They will definitely They will definitely be um, sorted for a long time now. Now, anyway, even though it's free to play, the average spend per person is $58 or £44, with 69% of players having made an in-game purchase. Eh, I ain't doing that anytime soon because I know how boneheaded this can be. <coughs> This massive cash generation potential is a huge incentive to incorporate such retailing strategies into games. While the lack of any physical or monetary reward means they circumvent traditional gaming classification and cost publishers nothing. However, Belgium's Gambling Commission says this feature is tantamount to betting and is damaging the mental health of its young audience. The Chinese government has passed legislation to require odds of certain types of loot crates to be disclosed. Have it done worldwide, then EA will never do this again! Mind you, it's EA we're talking about here, of course they never learn! Such responses appear necessary, given that gaming companies have implemented little to nothing by way of social responsibility measures. Uh, Professor Del Fabro and Dr. King wrote, But Epic Games say its free-to-play version of Fortnite does not include loot crates, but allows purchases of cosmetic items. Test this theory. Outfit costs. Does it mention anything? Say the emotes. Each outfit is assigned a rarity, and each rarity has a different cost. Green uncommon, common, 800 V-Bucks. Blue, which is rare, 1,200 V-Bucks. Purple, which is epic, 1,500 V-Bucks. And gold or legendary, 2,000 V-Bucks. Yeah. Those are not loot boxes. You brainless, idiotic morons! And that's why that's the gaming screw up of the week. Now, on to the main section of the show the news itself. Right. News on Rocket League. Rocket League 2 is unlikely as 
the developers are focusing on games as a service in dead. Right, here we go. Rocket League has been one of gaming's biggest success stories of the past few years. Launched in July 2015. Hey! The game's three years old! Woohoo! The game has been... The game, the game has 45 million registered players by developer Psyonic's latest count, with between 6 and 7 million players play, people playing every month. That reminds me, I need to get Rocket League back up and running. Given the names, given the game's huge success, you might be wondering if a sequel is coming. It's not. At least not anytime soon, according to the game director Scott Rudy. Okay, so it's not coming anytime soon. Okay, I can handle that, I can handle that. Rudy, who joined Cyanix earlier this year, told GameSpot in an interview that the studio is focused on treating Rocket League like a platform. The studio is pouring resources into supporting the game with new content instead of making a full-on sequel. That's what Overwatch is doing, that's what Heroes of the Storm is doing, and it is working. Take note, EA! All you do with your sports games, mind you, mind you, you could say the same about Code Masters for Formula 1, but my point, but my point stands. My point still stands. I'll happily pay 60 quid a year for Formula 1. The sports games like here, NBA, NBA Live, your um, FIFA, NHL, UFC, NFL, they should only be released once and never released again. The only updates you should be doing are updates to the roster. And even then, you still ship the games broken because you are stupid, brainless, idiot, moron clowns! That's preferable to do. That's preferable to do. Games as a service, really said. The most valuable thing in our game is our fans. A lot of the a lot of the stuff we do is focused on keeping them with us, keeping them interested and all hyped about our game. We want to provide a really good experience for players to have fun with for years to come. And hey, three years on and people are still playing it. So I was like, I need to get, like I said, games, I, guys, I need to get Rocket League back up and running. So that's what I'm going to do. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be busy on two for Tuesdays with Rocket League action. Because I've got a Rocket League Champions League, the Rocket League NBA Playoffs, and the Rocket League Stanley Cup. Which should take us right up until the start of the new football season. He added, we want to keep this going. I don't know, I don't know what I'd do with Rocket League 2. I'd rather do more to expand the existing Rocket League. It's doing great. There's a lot ahead of it. So yeah, we have no plans for Rocket League 2. Rudy's comments match up with what Psyonix executive Jeremy Dun... Jeremy Dunham! Dot com! Said in March 2017. At the time, he said, Why would we want to take this huge community that we've already built that's still going and say, What? You're playing. What you're playing now is going to be irrelevant in 12 months. But what we want, but we want you to stop what you're doing, give us money all over again, and move over to this other game. Yeah, sounds like EA every single year. Mind you, 2K are just as guilty for NBA 2K, but I'm happy with that because it's, it's because NBA 2K far better than EA. And Codemasters have done a much better job with the, the Formula One games than EA ever did. Or ever will. So, but we want to just. Dunham said, "Dunham said that way of thinking games is coming to an end." Try telling EA that. As it relates to ongoing support for Rocket League, Psyonix is kicking off a third year anniversary event on July the 9th, which happens to be on Monday. Excellent. 
This will introduce a new 3v3 anniversary playlist and a happy birthday topper to collect, among other things. Additionally, Psyonix recently announced a Rocket Pass offering that you can buy to unlock new content all the time. Ooh. It is part of Psyonix's ongoing effort to keep people in the game and having a fun time. Another part of what keeps players coming back to Rocket League is the new licensed cars that you can buy. Just recently, Psyonix just released the Jurassic World Jeep, which is up. Jurassic World, even though it says Jurassic Park on it, but my point still stands. Which previously launched, while previously launched licensed content has included Vehicles like the Batmobile and the DeLorean Time Machine from Back to the Future. Rudy told GameSpot that you can expect more, even more licensed cars for, for Rocket League in the future. Ooh, okay. As with games like Fortnite and others, the extra content you can buy with real money in Rocket League is cosmetic only in nature and does not impact the gameplay. This is important because it keeps the playing field level, Rudy said. Monetize, monetizing and adding systems that would imbalance... That is not right for us. I'm sure for other games it makes sense. <laughs> for any game it makes no sense. But for us, it's just it's not just what we're about, Rudy said. We want to keep we want to keep it pure, keep it clean, and let player skill and teamwork rule the day. Rocket League originally launched in July 2015 for PS4 and PC before coming to Xbox One in 2016 and then into the Nintendo Switch in 2017. An independent esports game that has done so much more in three years than EA ever did over their entire lifespan. This one's alright, that looks like I found something tasty. Ooh, brutal. Fallout 76's service-based direction doesn't mark a future of Bethesda games. Todd Howard, Corpor corporately, we've done a mix. People forget sometimes. Right, so here we go, let's see what we have. Everything we know about Fallout 76 so far suggests our next Wasteland Wonder will be unlike its forerunners. For starters, Fallout 76 is an online multiplayer survival game. While it's not full-on PvP, it's less single-player focused than what we're used to. In conversation with GameBiz, GameIndustry.biz, Bethesda director Todd Howard assured prospective players that while Fallout 76 takes a game as it takes a games as a service approach, similar to Elder Scrolls Online, this is not the permanent outlook of the developer or and or its future games. It doesn't mark the future, Howard tells GI.biz. Corporately, we've done a mix. People forget sometimes. The Elder Scrolls Online is one of the biggest online games in the world. We have Fallout Shelter, which we keep updating, and Elder Scrolls Legends. Anyone who has ever said this is the future and this is part and this part of gaming is dead has been proven wrong every single time. Just ask games like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. For a long time we wanted to try we wanted to try a multiplayer game and we had this idea. We shouldn't be afraid. We should try it. Of course, Fallout Shelter, The Elder Scrolls Online. The Elder Scrolls Legends and the incoming The Elder Scrolls Blades and Fallout 76 are games less reminiscent of Bethesda's traditional 100 hour plus action role players. One particular E3 reveal, however, should fit that bill come launch. Well, interesting. Okie dokie. Now this is brutal. This is brutal. 
player crashes Fortnite rocket launch viewing party to net single round kill record. That is brutal. This is going to be brutal. It was inevitable, wasn't it? Yesterday, Fortnite fans piled into the game to watch its famous rocket blast off and crack open the sky. Many spurned the usual kill or be killed mentality to cooperatively build huge ramps to get the best view. That I like. They all perched on top, eagerly anticipating liftoff. But it was just too tempting for some people. Why does that not surprise me? Many spurred. Elemental underscore Ray was one player that couldn't help themselves. Moments after the rocket blasted into the sky, he broke the giant ramp that his fellow combatants were standing on, eyes fixed on the sky, and they all came tumbling down. In total, Elemental Ray secured 48 kills in one go. One ramp. 48 deaths! Brutal! A new single round record for a solo player in Fortnite. You can watch the chaos unfold in the video below. The rocket launch begins at 3 minutes 50. Goody! This is good. This is going to end very well. Note how I'm being sarcastic. Of course it's not going to end well. Reminds me of when I'm singing Tom and Jerry every week. Talking of which, folks. Two more episodes late to this. Two more episodes uh, this weekend. Episode 17 and on the way this weekend. Uh, just, and also a quick thing regarding Pokemon Go, folks. Um, a quick thing regarding Pokemon Go this weekend, folks. Shiny Articunals for three hours this weekend, and, sh and Shiny Squirtles for Community Day. Plus, complete field research tasks, and half za you can get, you could encounter a Squirtle with the sunglasses. Here comes the Squirtle Squad, baby! Nevertheless. Here we go. This is going to be fun. Now. And obviously here we are. Start of the round. Oh no. 92, 90. Now uh, players are already going down. I really want to start, I, really, I want to start playing Fortnite now. I don't have any intentions of breaking the record anytime soon, but. Stall by shrinks in three minutes, 15 seconds. Obviously, this is on PC. Oh, those mushrooms are shield. <laughs> Look at that. They've already started building a ramp. Okay. This is brilliant. Down to eighty six.
Not enough materials left? Yeah, okay. That's a long way up. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 not cool. Down to eighty four. I like how they're trying to keep this as steady as possible. Had more moments like this. We're down to seventy eight. <laughs> Some of them enjoying their popcorn. This is brilliant. I mean, I mean, look at that. You can actually see the store, and there it is. See the storm approaching. Down to seventy, sixty-nine. What on earth? What the? F Bridge sixty six. No, oh, no, what the what the was was he on the what? Hang on. Something tells me he was on that rocket. Down at sixty six at this point, sixty five, sixty four.
Enough showboating! Ah, oh, talk about karma. Talk about karma. Ray meets his own squishy end soon after he racks up the kills when another player breaks the ramp he's standing on. I suppose the pl I suppose the players that missed most of the rocket launch. I, I suppose the players that missed most of the rocket launch because of Ray's antics can take heart in the fact that they're that they're now part of Fortnite history. And they can console themselves by watching James's view of the rocket launch, which was pretty much perfecto. That is brute forty eight, just like that. Talking of Fortnite, there's a cheating problem and not enough is being done to fix it. Unofficial downloadable cheats for Fortnite have been found to contain malware. It's proven tricky for Epic Games to solve the cheatware problem. Fortnite has won the fight to become the biggest battle royale game, but it has one problem. One huge problem. Cheats. It's a breeze to download software that claims to rig the game in your favour. Want to automatically aim better? Sure, five victor. Vic, Vic G Tori is the only, is only a couple of clicks away. Except, of course, it isn't. A cheat installed by users thousands of times, which was meant to give both in-game currency and an inbot to make shots more accurate, ac actually contained malware. The goal of the scammers to make money. I actually reported on something similar to this uh, last week. The code discovered by game streaming service Rainway allowed a man in the middle attack to direct web traffic through a web ads service, making the cheats creator money. After noticing an unusual quantity of error reports from its tracker, Rainway found the common link was the users playing or more specifically cheating at Fortnite. Instead of getting ahead, those who used the cheat instead found themselves infected with adware and fairly common fate for hack downloaders and proof that cheaters never prosper. Ha 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 this is all great. It's set up to anti-cheat providers to protect games from those who seek to break them open. Bastian Suter, the CEO and lead developer of BattleEye, a service that aims to protect both Fortnite and its main rival player on those battlegrounds, which is far inferior to Fortnite, come at me PUBG, as well as many other online enabled titles, runs one of the providers. He explains that this kind of cheat is common, that is, the cheat that doesn't actually function as a cheat, but is simply just disguised malware. There simply isn't much public stuff about live games out there. The ones which do work are usually shared only in private groups, making it hard for anti-cheat companies to get a hold of them. The source of these download codes, Suter says, often lead back to one country in particular. China is one of the biggest challenges for us currently. The hacking market in China is huge. Hackers there update pretty much all the time, so it's a constant battle against them. As a result, the issue cannot be completely solved. However, this also pushes us to constantly improve. In February 2016, malware was discovered in add-ons for the online game Hearthstone. Hmm. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, how's about that? Definitely makes things interesting. Next, Nintendo Switch getting classic SNK arcade games, including Ikari Warriors. Ooh, this will be a good read. With its detachable controllers and... Ooh, ooh, excuse me. With its detachable controllers and handheld screen, the Nintendo Switch makes for the perfect on-the-go retro gaming console. And while Nintendo itself is taking its time before bringing its classics to the transforming console, there will be some vintage titles on the way thanks to SNK later this year. The SNK 40th Anniversary Collection packages up a host of much-loved coin-up titles in a pixel-perfect format for Nintendo's handheld. Super Shooter Ups. Launching on November 13th, the first wave includes the amazing Rambo-inspired shooter Ikari Warriors, Athena, Alpha Mission, and Guerrilla War, among others. There are 11 titles announced so far, with more to join the lineup ahead of that launch date. You'll be able to grab all 11 as part of a pre ordered deal, while each will be available individually too. So there could be more SNK fun later this year too. The Neo Geo, the original home of the Incredible Metal Slug series, is shrinking down to a mini format like the SNES Classic Mini, squeezing in 40 games. No release date is set, but a late 2018 launch has been teased. Okie dokie. All the more reason for people to get excited about getting a Nintendo Switch later down the road. Including myself, no matter. Uh, including myself for that matter, even. Ooh, ooh. Excuse me, folks. Bear with me. Right, so Dead Island 2 is not cancelled. This will be interesting. Right, it's been quite a while since the most recent update for Dead Island 2, as it's been a year since the publisher Deep Silver last confirmed that its open world zombie game was still in active development by the team at Sumo Digital, not long after the title's Steam page had been removed. Now the companies have stepped forward once again to assure any to assume, assuage, however you pronounce it, any concern of the title not being in the works, as the publisher and developer have reiterated once more that the sequel is not cancelled. As seen in the exchange below between a fan and the official Twitter account representing Dead Island 2 and all things related to the franchise, the former asked if anyone should still be expecting to see the sequel come out. Not only did the social media account confirm that it's definitely still in development, but also that it would offer more about the forthcoming project at a later stage. Right. For those unaware, Dead Island 2 has had quite the lengthy development as the zombie killing sequel was initially revealed with a trailer at E3 2014. Good grief, is that four years ago? Only to have encountered myriad delays along the way. As a matter of fact, the game's future was thrown into question after its young former developer Jaeger Productions was pulled from working on it and split with Deep Silver due to both of the companies having different respective visions of the project. Thankfully though, Deep Silver's parent company, Koch Media, eventually announced that Sumo Digital would be taking over development. 
bearing all of this in mind, the fact that Dead Island 2 is still alive, oh, the irony in that state, and kicking, ought to please fans who have had their fingers crossed that the title would ever see the light of day. Plus, with the game's Twitter accounts now publicly acknowledging fans, it's quite possible that there could be more concrete news to come in the following days or weeks. At this point, one can only hope that the sequel simply manages to release and just provide improvements upon the original, as its troubled development has made many worried about the quality of the content to come. Dead Island 2 currently does not have an official release date, but it is expected to launch on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Right. Good to know that the game is still on the way. I mean, I played part of the first Dead Island. Wasn't the biggest fan of it, to be honest. But hey, that's... That's just me. That's just me. Right. So here we go. Uh, Asterix and Obelix XXL3 announced. Just early, just uh, earlier this morning, in fact. I don't know why. This new action adventure game will offer players the chance to play as Asterix or Obelix alone or with a friend in an adventure featuring spectacular combat rounds, exploration, and puzzles to solve. Both diehard and more recent fans will be excited about taking part in this epic adventure without two heroes. Asterix and Obelix XXL3 is set for release in 2019 on all platforms. And it features an original story in a world that remains faithful, faithful to that of the comic books. Okay. Not really much to say beyond that apart from. Okay. Fine by me. We've had a leak, ladies and gentlemen. Relax, not in my flat. A leak as far as release dates are concerned. Microsoft Store leak Shenmue 1 and 2 remaster release date. And Sega has confirmed this leak. Not long to wait now. Looks like Microsoft forced Sega's hand indeed. Ooh. Japanese game publisher just released a pre-order trailer for Shenmue 1 and 2 and confirmed the release date for the compilation with August 21st. You can now also pre-purchase the game on Steam. Well. Way to get the fans hyped up for Shenmue 3, people. On a more serious note though, and this is going to be interesting, Roblox Gang Rape Shocks Mother. Oh my goodness me, this is... That just sounds uncomfortable, but nevertheless, I shall persevere and press onwards. This is going to be interesting, I did... I was not looking forward to covering a story like this, but nevertheless, here we go anyway. A US mom has written a Facebook post describing her shock at seeing her child's avatar being gang raped by others in the online game Roblox. Who would have thought that would be possible in a game like that? Amber Peterson said her seven year old 
was playing the game which is marketed at children, keep this in mind, when she showed her the screen and asked what was happening. She also shared screenshots which showed two male avatars attacking her daughter's female character. Roblox said it had banned the player who carried out the action. Ms. Peterson said in her post that she felt traumatized and violated on so many levels following the experience. The screenshots she shared include a representation of male genitalia. Oh, good grief, that's not pleasant. Parents or caregivers, not only do I urge you to delete this app, I hope you will take another look at all of your devices and their security settings, she wrote on Facebook. Wow. Zero tolerance, this next section reads. Roblox said it was outraged that a bad actor had violated its community policies and rules of conduct. We have zero tolerance for this behavior, said a spokesperson. Our work to ensure a safe car platform is always evolving to it and remains a top priority for us. Roblox is a popular multiplayer game marketed at children and has been compared to Mojang hit Minecraft. Players can create their own games and also join in games created by others. It has a 7 plus rating, 7 plus age rating from the European Classification Classifier Peggy or Pan European Game Information and a 10 plus rating from the ESRB, Entertainment Rates Software Rating Board in the US. It has been around for 14 years and claims to have 64 million monthly players. The UK Safer Internet Centre has a blog post containing guidance for parents whose children play Roblox. They include activating the additional safety features for children aged under 13 and showing an interest in the games they play. Why do the parents, I mean, why do, why don't we have more parents for this? A couple of weeks ago, I did the secret achievements for the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which came out on Xbox One a couple of weeks ago, and Nintendo Switch and PC, Crash Bandicoot on PC for the first time, officially, anyway, anyway, Crash Bandicoot beats the crew two to UK number one, my word, still dominating. That just shows you how much people loved Crash Bandicoot. And still do to this day. Sales of The Crew 2 are down 25% on the first game as Crash Bandicoot becomes the fastest selling Switch title of 2018. KABOOM! Retro compilation Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy has become the best selling PlayStation 4 exclusive of last year. And is now it seems to be proving just as popular on other formats. You've got the market. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Sorted. Sold. Take my money. The timed exclusive was only released on Xbox One, Switch, and PC last week, with just 250 sales separating two new console versions. 250 sales. That's not much. The game did so well, it became the fastest selling Switch game of the year. Ooh, 
Hey, nice. Although that's not really saying much given the relatively minor Mario Tennis Aces was its closest competition. Yeah, that's gonna be blown out of the water when, uh, what's its name? None other than the almighty Super Smash Bros. Ultimate! Gets released. The success of Crash Bandicoot has meant the crew 2 was kept from the number one in both charts, with the first week sales of Ubisoft sequel down a quarter on the 2014 original. However, the first game launched at Christmas, and these charts, as always, only count retail sales. Keep that in mind, and not digital. So while the sequel doesn't show any obvious signs of growth for the franchise, its performance is by no means disastrous. Okay? Last week was unusually busy for new releases. The Switch version of Wii Wolfenstein 2 appeared at number 24 in the individual format chart. Multi-platform, multi-format title, Harvest Moon, A Light of Hope, debuted at number 26 in the all, form, all formats chart, with the Switch version proving the bestseller, and reaching number 33 in the individual formats chart. Far Cry 3 Classic Edition also squeaked in at number 37 in all formats chart, but failed to make the individual formats top 40. The rest of the chart movement was all down to retailer promotions, with major jumps for Star Wars Battlefront 2, heaven forbid, Middle Earth Shadow of War, and Destiny 2, all of which were previously at the centre of last year's, loot boxes con last year's loot box controversies. More like loot box scandal, and primarily Star Wars Battlefront 2. As busy as last week might have been, there are no major releases due this week as the UK market endures the traditional summer games drought. Although next week sees the release of Octopath Traveler and Lego The Incredibles, both of which should do well considering the lack of competition. <laughs> um, hello? Uh, Crash Bandicoot? That's still gonna be selling like hotcakes? Hello? So here we go. The charts for June 30th are as follows. Uh, uh, the UK individual formats charts. Number 10, Super Mario Odyssey down four places on the Nintendo Switch. Number 9, down five places is Detroit Become Human on the PlayStation 4. Number 8, down three places, FIFA 18 on PlayStation 4. Number 7, also down three places, uh, four places is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. New entry at number 6, The Crew 2 on Xbox One. Number 5, down 3 places, is God of War on the PlayStation 4. Number 4, down 3 places, knocked off the number 1 position, Mario Tennis Aces on the Nintendo Switch. Number 3, another new entry, The Crew 2, this time on PlayStation 4. And uh, number 2, and number 1, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Number 2, being the Nintendo Switch. And number 1, the Xbox. And the UK all formats charts. Number 10, up two slots from last, from the previous week, it's Far Cry 5 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Number 9, down four places, it's Fallout 4. Number 8, down one place, is Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 7, and number seven a re-entry into the top 10, it is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Then you've got uh, number 6, down two places, is Mario Kart. Eight Deluxe, number three, also down two places, God of War, number four, down one place, Mario Tennis Aces, number three, down a place, FIFA 18, number two, uh, new entry is The Crew 2, and number one, climbing a massive 21 places, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. And that is that. So. That is that. So. There are 57 achievements here. 
1,250 points. We have got some secret achievements and some DLC achievements, and that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, here we go. So, first up, we have got the secret achievements for Far Cry 4 plus the DLC, the Valley of the Yetis. The secret achievements are as follows. Welcome to Kiryat, join the Golden Path, 20 gamer score. One down, decide Deplore's fate. Campaign only. Uh, let's see, these, let's see, these are all campaign only. 50 gamer score. Two down, decide Nua's fate. Campaign only, 50 gamer score. Hat trick, decide Yuma's fate. 50 gamer score. The king is dead. 100 gamer score. Decide Pagan Min's fate. And the DLC, you've got the ba Valley of the Yeti. Build a complete one relay station upgrade quest. Single player only, 25 gamer score. Master Builder, complete all relay station upgrade quests. Single player only, 50 gamer score. Awakened, complete the Valley of the Yeti's campaign, 50 gamer score. Spiritual Hunter, kill a Yeti, 25 gamer score. Master of the Awakened, kill five Yetis, 50 gamer score. Home Sweet Home, occupy the relay station, 25 gamer score. And Night Survivor. Defend the relay station and survive the first night. 25 gamer score. And that's it for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Like I say, tomorrow we've got more Tom and Jerry since Saturday. It's a Saturday, so that's going to be pretty fun. Uh, not only that, uh, Tuesday instead of Cuphead, because I say I've, pre I've pretty much decided not to continue Cuphead at this point. But nevertheless, Rocket League is back back on this channel rocket league season four that's right season four of rocket league is here on well i'm calling it season four the first three seasons were on my previous channel until i had to shut that down unfortunately but anyway Here we go. So that's it. That's it for today, folks. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to grab ties into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Lights Day Season Notification Squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Yesterday I did Tarzan. That is that went up actually earlier this morning on the left and on the right. You've got my dedicated trophy team podcast playlist. Tomorrow, double episode of Tom and Jerry Sins. Until then, see you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out and stay faithful. As always.